Hey, everybody. Welcome to another episode of Masks Off. I'm Kim. And I'm Tia. And today we're going to have a really interesting conversation. Well, every week is an interesting conversation. Exactly. But we were talking about triggers and we have talked about triggers before, but this time we were thinking about it from a little different perspective in the sense of why does one thing trigger me or bother me, but that same event, that same thing may not trigger you and what makes us respond so differently. So that's what we're going to dive into today. But let me begin with the quote as we normally do. And today's quote is very short and simple. Whatever is triggering you is on you. (laughs) I love it. Short and sweet. Yep. By Richie Norton. Because it's the truth. We often, Mm -hmm. very often, when we feel triggered, and we could talk about what does that mean, triggered, right? That's just one of these terms that we throw around. Activated. Activated, upset, reaction, being reactionary. Reactionary. And so we often, when we feel that way, a lot of the time, the go-to is one to say, mm, you made me, you know, you made me, you made me, you made, you me. made me feel this way, or you made me do that or say yep. that, or it's always it's pointing the finger, mm-hmm. but the reality is, and the truth is, at least from what we have learned thus far from all of our wisdom teachers is that when we feel triggered, activated, emotional, upset, Mm -hmm. whatever, yada, 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 it's because of something within us. And that sucks because that means we have to own it, right? We have to own that and take responsibility for it and go inward. Exactly. And I love how Janet Philbin, who was a guest on our podcast, she uses the term, something in you is poked, you're poked. Oh, and I yeah. just love that. I've always grabbed onto that ever since I heard her yes. use that term several years ago, because it is, it's, we're getting poked. And if we're not, yes. if we don't feel a poke, we're not triggered, but yeah. it's getting poked because it's within us. So you and I can have, be at a situation yeah. and someone does something or says something or whatever, and I could get poked and you may be like, not a big deal but I yeah. feel hurt. I feel that was directed at me. I feel whatever story I add into my head. Yeah. But if the wound is not in you and it's in me, you're not going to, for you, you're going to be like, well, they just, they didn't mean anything by it or blah, 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 whatever the story is. But because there's some unhealed wound within me that gets poked or triggered or activated, it causes me to have a reaction then, but not in you is a perfect example of why the trigger is actually, it's us. It's not on the outside. Now people can be jerks. People can do things that are unkind, but then usually everyone notices like, well, that was a kind of a jerk move, (laughs) right? Right. Right. It's it's typically, but you can also look at it with compassion and like what happened to you and all of that. But that's when, you know, you can separate like, oh, they actually were unkind or they were this and it didn't have an activation in me I notice that well that was not very whatever but it didn't cause it didn't do the wound and that's when you know like there's that difference of oh it's actually within me I mean you can yeah. even use an example and I use this with clients is you see you're somewhere and your kid uh, the, your friend's kid does something and it can be, you know, a temper tantrum or they throw a toy or whatever it is. And perhaps you get really triggered and activated. And the mom is like, whatever, not big deal meets them with connection and moves through or the other, or you're, you're like, what's the big deal? And the mom's completely like, you can't do that. You're in a timeout, whatever. So noticing that some action can have a completely different response by two different people. 100%. Or a, you know, a co-parenting situation, husband, wife, partners, whatever it is, want the one parent may get really irritated by that child's action or words or, and the other one's like, why are you overreacting? (laughs) 
Uh, yeah, I know that one very well. Yeah, I <laughs> most most parents do. Yes. Yeah. Uh, maybe that's where the whole thing, good cop, bad cop came from too, in a sense, oh, because right. One is not really being activated while the other is perhaps, mm -hmm. I don't know. Right. Um, but before we continue to have that conversation and talk about all of that, we can just maybe mention here too, for a moment that this whole being feeling, once you feel triggered, mm -hmm. right, what we're saying is a good healthy approach is to next go inward, right? Exactly. To go in and see what is going on inside of me. What wound is inside of me? What part of me is being activated that needs attention? Mm -hmm. And this whole process of doing that is a part of our process that we've right. been creating. Mm -hmm. And so I think it just, you know, um, is worthy to just mention right now that we are working on this process and that um, it, it, it's, it's a way to really heal and grow exactly. because I feel like for me, most of my life, I was just in this perpetual state of being activated and reacting mm -hmm. and reacting and reacting and feeling like a victim because I was feeling like there was a perpetrator all the time exactly. and I didn't have the skill set the awareness or the knowledge or know-how to like, okay, let me go inward, you know? And like you said, even if the other person was doing something like, you know, my mom, and again, it's not to, I say this all the time, bring up my mom because of our relationship and, and whatever, how, however it was when I was young and she would say things or do things that were hurtful but at the end of the day, it was, it still is my responsibility. Especially as in, an adult, especially as an right. adult, We're, you know, a right. six-year-old does I, not have right. the ability. Right. That's the right. Part. We're saying like yeah. now, I, you know, even when I was in my twenties, when I was in my thirties mm -hmm. and I could still get very activated by something she would say or behavior that she would say, or a look. Oh, or a tone, a tone, a tone <laughs> right. That would send me right back to being that 10 year old, 12 year old, 14 year old, or whatever it was. Completely. So, um, even though it, what she was saying and doing may not have, might have been harmful in some way, what mm -hmm. it was, or somebody might say, geez, why, why are you saying that to her? Right. It still is my responsibility as an adult to go inward. And how we respond to a potential harm, whether it's conscious or unconscious, you know, because sometimes it is intentional, right? So yes. taking the intentional ones off the table for the most part, right? For at this moment, how we choose to respond and engage in that situation next, that's where we have that choice. And, you know, and so yeah. this process we're talking about is starting to go through, go within. So when you do choose your next step, it's coming from a place of conscious awareness versus reactionary triggered space. 100%. Which can 100%. shift the dynamic within yourself. It doesn't mean it's going to change the other person, but it changes you inside in right. a different way. And understanding too, in this process, it doesn't mean you lay down and bypass and avoid, you know, cause a lot of times there's the, well, just don't say anything. Okay. But sometimes you need to say something. Yeah. And so that's that discernment, which can only come from really understanding and looking at why am I getting poked? Why am I getting activated? Why am I reactionary? Am I really engaging with this person in the now? Or as you said, mm. you're, you're, you're back to your 10 year old self. And that's the feeling that is getting re- lived and replayed out and continuing that old pattern, which served you back then, of course. Right. But does not serve me now as an adult. Right. And that's what, like, I am so super excited about our process and it, you know, it, what we created is just the way it flows and how we put it together, but the teachings and the wisdom behind it are not ours, you know, new to us. We're just right. taking a compilation of 
things that we've learned and we've put it together, but I'm so excited about it because it's such an easy, I think it's a simple, easy way to go through the steps when I'm feeling stuck yep. and feeling triggered. And not only when we're feeling stuck or triggered, it's a process that helps people understand after the fact, because trying to access yeah. it when it's a really high trigger, a really big reaction is challenging. We're human. I mean, oh, that's it's almost whole... always, at, yeah, yeah, it's after the fact for me, you know, I feel the trigger or I feel the emotion and then you know, a few, sometimes it's a couple minutes later, sometimes it could be an hour later, sometimes it mm -hmm. could be the next day, a couple days right. later, or right. all these days I'm feeling all this yuckiness, this muck and I'm, Ooh, you know, and then mm -hmm. I'm like, okay, let's go. Let me go to the process. Correct. We don't want to give it all away just yet, but we're just, you know, put planting some seeds out there, of what we're yeah. offering soon. But I am super excited because as I said before, I would spend my whole life just in this perpetual state of reactivity. And now I feel like, I feel that I have this tool or this way of moving through those yeah. emotions and finding the freedom. Like there mm -hmm. is more freedom now. Correct. Because it's a way of, once I go inward, when I'm feeling triggered, as the quote says, when I, whatever is triggering me is on me. So whenever I have, and I feel that it, like if something that my daughter is doing, my son, my anyone, it's usually those people for the most part that are in my inner circle, right? That it can really is. push the buttons the most, right? Yeah. And so when I take the time and I go through that process, I can release the emotion in the present moment. Exactly. And that's what the key is because even if it is old stuff, which it is most of the time, old yeah. stuff that's coming up, because that's what we're talking about. A wound inside of me, an emotional wound is being triggered, which mm -hmm. is most like it's coming from the past that I never addressed it at the time because I didn't know how to. Right. So the Which universe is important to recognize you didn't exactly. have the skills, did not have this. And majority of us do not have the skills, did no. not grow up with the skills. So we're learning to reparent ourselves now. Mm -hmm. And so then I just now, and the universe is going to keep allowing me opportunity after opportunity to learn always, <laughs> always bringing it up to the surface. And then now I can address it in the present moment. And when I do it, not just me, but all of us, mm -hmm. when you address that in the moment, then it has the opportunity to just kind of dissipate, integrate, integrate. and integrate. Yeah. And it's right. like, okay, another, another little layer is, is healed. Mm -hmm. And it doesn't another mean that layer. you're not going to get poked about that exact same, oh. exact similar thing. It, you know, we're not looking to eliminate it forever. I think that does a disservice right. because it just becomes less charged. It becomes less. more, less often to actually cause a reaction us because we see it, we catch it, we shift it in the moment, but we're still human. And when we aren't taking yeah. care of ourselves, we're not, you know, honoring what we need, doing those things for ourselves then those old things rise back up. And it's the reminder to go back within like, okay, it's time to take care of myself because I'm getting more triggered more often. That's usually a sign that you're setting yourself aside. Yeah. At least that's what I noticed for myself. Like, you know, I'm not getting enough sleep. I'm not eating well or whatever it is. It's like, Oh boy, I'm getting what? triggered a lot. <laughs> That's, 100%. That's on me, you know, so there's another layer of that's on me. So taking yeah, care I, of ourselves. Yeah. I love that you brought that in. That's a really good point. And it is another way of looking at it. I totally agree. When I'm out of alignment, body, mind, and spirit, mm -hmm. I can be very triggered. And again, mm -hmm. going back to prior to doing all this work and being on this path, this journey, I was always 
because my people pleaser mask, my rescuer mask, my fix it mask, my victim mask was thick. Oh, Many yeah. layers of it. I mean, it was like I was in the throes of being a people pleaser. And so therefore, I was exhausting myself running yeah. around, you know, that saying of running around like a chicken with its head cut off. Right, right. And I was just my, I was just um, carrying out what was modeled to me by my mom where she would you know exhaust herself by working and doing things for people to the point that by after dinner time she would just collapse on the couch Mm -hmm. in exhaustion and I would do the same and as an adult yeah and how many times when we are in that people pleasing pattern the fixer all of that Then it's always everyone. I have to do everything for everybody. No one can do anything for themselves. The martyr mask. Totally. Mm -hmm. And then, you know, she collapses and I can't make the certainty, but I would imagine it's like, gosh, if someone else would just help me out, if I only, I didn't have to do all this stuff, I wouldn't be so exhausted. Yeah. But the reality is, and this is a hard pill for people to swallow, especially moms, because we are conditioned to be this way. It's not only, but it's recognizing that we're choosing to do this. I know. So we need to take ownership. I need to take ownership. Like, I mean, and I have, but over the years, I'm like, I took, no one told me I had to do it. Right. That is a very hard pill to swallow, but the only way we can shift and evolve and heal these wounds within us is to start to take that ownership you know and that's a whole nother part of the process that we talk about and a whole I mean that's a many many conversations but it's so much easier to blame others than to be like it is so much easier did someone actually tell me I had to do all that or did I just do it to be the good mom I'm supposed to do that Well, the good mom, for sure, like in terms of being the pleaser and the caretaker, if that's the other one, the caretaker in particular with the moms. But even Mm -hmm. before that, for me in high school, it was Mm -hmm. the overachiever, Yeah, the overachiever mask. I mean, I think I shared before on an episode that my freshman year of high school, I would go to school all day, then right after school, go to um, soccer practice Monday through Friday. And then three nights a week, go right from soccer practice to band practice until nine, like nine 30 at night and then go home and do homework. Exactly. So it was, I was the overachiever. I was trying to get all good grades, Mm -hmm. play a sport, be in the band. I was probably in other things as well. And I would be utter. I remember at times my mother would laugh at me too. Like when I would get to that point of sheer exhaustion, just laying down on the kitchen floor. Now as a 14, 15 year old, just laying on the kitchen floor, like, you know, just spread out, just like oh, crying, you know, yeah. like, cause I was utterly exhausted. <laughs> it brings to mind the old, the old commercials of Kelga and take me away. Take me away. <laughs> I know. So we're dating you know, ourselves. <laughs> yeah. That's way back, but it just goes to again. And then if I'm which I'm sure at the time I did respond where I was either overly sensitive or irritated or, you know, anything along those lines, because I was so utterly exhausted from, and it's because I was wearing the overachiever mask. No one told, again, no one told me to, my parents didn't say, oh, I think you should play soccer and join the band and, you know, run for class officer. They didn't do that. They, they didn't. And, you know, so this is where like our younger years, it gets more complicated, right? Yes, because it's much yes. harder to, to see that. Cause we don't know, we don't have this, we don't have the skills. We haven't lived a life. We haven't experienced all that, but I would imagine, and we've talked about this, so I kind of know that Yeah, they may not have said it, but in mm. their actions and in their attention, yeah. you were getting validated for being an overachiever. You were getting the attention, the right the the accolades by doing that which is why you kept doing it like if you had done that truly because you wanted to and they had no you know and it's not just in that moment there's also all the years before right 
you may not have gone that route, but that served you because oh, it kept you sure. at your place in standing in your family. So even it, though they didn't say yeah. it with their words, their energy said it. Absolutely. There's no doubt that that is true. And that was my role in the family yep, for exactly. sure. So, but all of this, all of these stories and anecdotes all just point toward what you were saying is that there are lots of reasons that we get triggered Mm -hmm. and we get triggered on the inside and it is on us and it's not necessarily about the other person right so it never is it never is it never is and that's why you know we talk a lot about personal responsibility And we will talk a lot about that in our course. We talk about co-creation. That's all of that plays into Mm -hmm. what this episode is all about. Right. And it's, it's challenging to go within. It's hard to go within, but if you want to make transformations and shift and step out of that shaming, guilt, criticism of ourselves or of others, you know, you may not even realizing you're criticizing yourself because you're so focused on criticizing others. If only they, they should, or I should, you know, that whole thought process cycle with is so common, you know, the way out is in. Mm. And that's it. Yeah, really. that's it. I love that. Oh, this, this was so good. So good. Are you complete? I am. I mean, we can always just keep rambling, but we like to keep them shorter. Yes. <laughs> so I am complete absolutely. for this one. <laughs> yes, me as well. So thank you everyone for listening or viewing. And as always, if you enjoyed this episode, we would love and appreciate some feedback. You can like, you can comment, you can subscribe in any way, shape or form. We would love the support. Great. Thank you so much. Thanks everyone. Bye.